be invited back on business and politics. And really? it's because uh, we we had such an interesting discussion, but that we, we were limited by time constraints. But Aww. thank you for, for making time again. Thank you for inviting me here. It's a pleasure and I am very grateful. You know, one, one of the things that really intrigued me when we were talking is that your background. Uh, if I recall correctly, you studied nutrition in college. Your husband is in agribusiness, yes. right? Um, how did you get into uh, shipping and logistics? <laughs> you know, I always joke about it that my husband took agribusiness and he kept on agreeing and <laughs> agreeing to all kinds of businesses. Uh, but joking aside, um, you know, I have a story uh, when my, my uh, daughter was two years old. My father-in-law was living in Calbayog, mm, Samar, summer. and uh, we drove all the way, took the nautical highway, I see. and then when we got there, oh my God, the lines were long, the toilets were so bad, the Roro, oh, oh, taking the Roro, and then like, um, I actually got sick after that trip because I was holding my pee, not using the, toil the dirty toilets at the oh. ports. Um, right after the trip, I went straight to Makati Med, uh, got hospitalized. But the, the story wow. is, um, when we saw the state of uh, the Roro network in the Philippines, somehow my husband uttered a prayer and said, I hope someday I can help in this um, area uh, and help our country. And maybe God heard the prayer, the universe, and he manifested it. And somehow we got into this business uh, in 2000. Um, so we started owning tugs and barges I see. to carry bagged fertilizer. I and see. then soon after, this Roro. So we bought a company with five Roro vessels, but old ones, secondhand from Japan. And then we ran it for a bit. And then we realized this is not the way to go. Yeah, you know, it's not a good business model to operate old um, ships uh, okay. imported from abroad, not suited for Philippine waters. So we embarked on a modernization plan. Uh, thank God we had investors who trusted us, who trusted the, the vision. And in 2010, we got approval for the funding of modern ships. And then the first fast cut arrived in 2013. And then now um, we're on our 20th ship. And as I mentioned to you, we have a big, hairy, audacious goal of 60 fast cuts by 2030. And why wow. and why not? Because sure. we are an archipelagic nation. Uh, we depend on this um, moving sea bridges to connect the Philippine Islands. Right. And so we're dreaming this for our country. Right. So, well, yeah. People look at your success and they, they, they may interpret that that this, you had a very easy going with your business. Okay. But we were talking earlier, there, there were a lot of challenges, even now, but you know, especially when you were, you were starting your business to, to grow it to this scale. Yeah. Right? And uh, yeah. do, you, do you regret any of that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you wish you went back to nutrition? <laughs> Actually, um, yeah. I, I was telling uh, fellow entrepreneurs in yeah. the entrepreneurs organization, like, how complex our business yeah. is and yes. how hard it is. And a friend of mine answered back with a fellow entrepreneur said, Anne, come on, what hmm. business is not eat hard, no? Right. Like, all... Everything is... Yes, is everything has its own hardships. But yeah. I guess shipping is complex no in right. itself it, it's an expertise it, it's technical right. so it needs uh, some kind of expertise to right. be successful in this field right. so thank God that uh, when we were here even if I took up the nutrition uh, and, <laughs> <laughs> and managing the ships and talking to uh, seafarers my thought bubble was saying that uh, how could these people believe me when I don't have the educational background? Sure. So in 2015, you, you I, think back to I decided to uh, enroll at the World Maritime University and took up executive maritime management. Right. And then, as if it, that's not enough, I took up uh, maritime education and training um, at the Philippine Merchant Marine Academy. So what am I saying? Um, so our company is really... Um, being experts in this field and being very good in this field so that uh, our country can depend on us in delivering the kind of services that they expect, no? being an archipelagic nation. Right. So um, it's complex, yeah. but uh, with uh, God's help, you know, strong faith, uh, we believe that we must be uh, this 
expert shipping company that our country needs, no? Because right. um, what we're doing is connecting the Philippine Islands, right. and it is needed for nation building and for national unity. I always tell our people, para sa bayan. Right. We're doing this para sa bayan. Right. Our people depend on us for right. this. So, yeah, um, well, it's complex. Said, yeah, yeah. She said there's a there's a there's a great need. Yes. And even with 60 ships, you know, I mean, yeah. serving Kula what, 110 million Filipinos, yeah. that, that's really... Still not know, enough. A drop in the bucket. No. Amen, yeah. yeah. True, true. Agree, yeah. yeah. So what's needed? I mean, if you were, if you were in position now and you were to uh, look at people like yourself, just, you know, many years ago starting, ba starting out, what, what, would have, what would have been easier uh, yeah. if, you, if you had... Maybe a chance to recommend to policymakers, to the yeah. government, yeah. hey, do this so that, you know, it would have been an easier process, journey for people yeah. who want to exactly. invest their yeah. own money, right, and then serve a, a, an important need of the Philippines. Yeah. So, as I mentioned to you, uh, my husband and I are very much active in the fairy world, no? Yes. Uh, because we feel that to be a good player in this industry then we must be experts and we must be learning continuously yeah. and one of the avenues uh, where we get all these learnings is from an organization of ferry owners called Interferry mm -hmm. and every time I'm there I uh, pick the brains of this uh, uh, in ferry companies some mm -hmm. of them are like third generation right. fourth generation right. I listen and yeah. I, I try to learn so you know in other countries uh, companies like ours are subsidized okay. by the state because the state would say because you provide a public uh, service exactly yeah, yeah. the state uh, would say um, if they they know it's their responsibility to, to connect their country you know, right. provide the road infrastructure right. so if it takes uh, for them to connect via sea, then they, they have some form of subsidy. So right. like Norway, they provide uh, fuel. Some routes in Canada, uh, they, they have a budget to support the, the players in the field. So for me, here in the Philippines, we don't have that structure yet. No? Okay. Um, but there are incentives uh, crafted such as uh, import, uh, tax free importation if you bring in brand new ships but you see ships are expensive no it's capital intensive sure. so i think you were saying something like one brand new ship that you bought from australia is something around 10 million dollars or something yeah yeah so that's, it's a, that's the that's serious the investment yeah yeah serious investment no? yeah. and then you operate you know you keep on moving there are a lot of moving parts and yeah. then we're subjected to to weather, right. high tide, low tide, right. uh, weather, and then regulatory requirements, and we're right. scattered all over the Philippines. Right. No, so my wish, no, my wish is that people uh, try to um, understand the business and support it in right. in, in their own way. Right. Um, a support would be, of course, using it, using the network, right. like maybe right. uh, traveling in the in the countryside, using using the service right. instead of maybe going abroad. Right. You know, that's right. one. Uh, to supporting us by helping us. Um, uh, maintain our operational expenses, so maybe right. uh, don't vandalize the ships, right, right. <laughs> or you know, we use the equipment property. You be know, responsible passengers. Yes, yeah. like be responsible passengers. That's one. Third, if I'm government, I yeah. will support it because it will bring to the local government unit, you know, the the a lot of return when right. they have that connection right i was mentioning right. to you that uh, yeah my you would say that we have the bragging right uh, that we were the first to connect mindoro to katiklan during the time of president gma in 2004 that was our ship that first uh, wow. connected those islands and there was no um, shopping centers like no naman mga mercury drug yeah the sorry sorry store but oh, not the commercial type yeah. Of, yeah and no banks yet yeah. no mga pera pa Dala, yeah. But yeah, when the Russia Rural Network, them. yes, then then the the ripple effect just really brought sure. in business and people and traffic in the area. Yeah. Um, so if I'm government, then I'll support that. Um, yeah. A lot of uh, government uh, people, governors, uh, congressmen would come and call and say, "Hey, can you connect our islands?" Yeah. And I would always say, or like like one Senator Legarda asked us to connect Antique, right. and, and I was saying, "Ma'am, you know we would." be happy to support and mm. connect the islands but 
it doesn't stop there. We Correct. would need people's support by Correct. using them or got, if I'm LGU, gathering all the cargo and right. you know getting them organized so that they right. use the service. Because right. once we connect, we burn fuel already. Right. And capital, no? So <laughs> that makes sense. You, <laughs> can, you can go to one island and then not refuel, right? Exactly, and yeah. And not need help. Or pay to people to run the ships, right? Or, yeah. 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 So, so what there's a whole ecosystem that needs to be developed. Exactly. Right, where so, you land and where you take off. Yeah. So we have to have that systemic thinking yeah. wherein you want us to connect you, then you also help us make it easy for us to operate our ships and right. get the traffic, get the people to take take the ship. Otherwise, right. it's going to die. It's not going to be sustainable. Because we've seen that happen when right. uh, during the time of GMA, when uh, President GMA, when they wanted us to connect Bataan. So, okay. so we pulled out uh, Bataan a ship, and, uh, uh, Manila? Manila, Manila okay. to Bataan. Yes. And then we, we put our ship there. Yeah. But then there's still traffic. And then, you, you know, uh, after investigating why, 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 why is it right. successful? Like the road network is not enough. It's I dark. See. People don't feel safe. I see. And you're asking me about Pasig River. Like what can we do with Pasig River? Right. So it's, you know, to be able to be successful there, you yeah. have to have not just the ship itself. Right. You have to have the you right. You need to have the system, right? Exactly. Right. So yeah. right design of a boat. Yeah. You, you need to have the landings. It has right. to be lighted. Road network. The connection to Connection other, to the main transport. artery. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Connection to the main artery. Then maybe ticketing system. Yeah. Uh, maybe making them, uh, making it accessible in the phone. Diba? Get yeah. an app so that uh, people will start using it. So again, it's not just the company itself, but then the whole ecosystem right. and population coming together to help and make this happen. Has it, has it become easier now? Because there's also, you know, not just, you know, between departments, right? But also between the national and local governments. Sometimes it's a, a tricky thing to, to navigate, yeah. right? Uh, do you see that there's more coordination now and maybe what, what else should happen uh, so yeah. that it's a, more, it's a more seamless experience, right, for people taking yeah. the ferries? You know, I, I think government government on their part doing something, you know, like Marina came up with a road, road map, 10-year right. road map. Um, we talk. We hear government saying they're supporting our seafarers yeah. and all, um, but we need to, I think, move at a faster pace. Okay. Yeah, like have that really. So the, all the ideas are there. You you need to implement it. Yeah. And implement it well. Right? Yeah, implementation and support of other agencies. Example. Um, Ships uh, by law should be dry docked every two years. Okay. We don't have a shipping industry. Uh, we, I mean, a shipping industry, sorry, steel industry. Okay. So all the steel plates that you need to import to be, it. Yes, has to be imported. So then we need the support of the Department of Finance and then customs to get this material done. And one of the the dream of Marina is to have like a. Um, a center wherein we, parang we import tax free. I see. And then get it, get things faster than the usual route. So it's, we've been talking about it. It's been in the air for quite some time, <laughs> but but it hasn't happened, no. So these things, no, that this has to happen. Of course, encouraging industries like yeah, the steel industry. Sana. To invest. Yeah, so, yeah. We hope we hope to have that yeah, or the parts. Yeah, to have that um, education, um, we have to upskill our, yeah. our our people yeah. and maybe change our um, uh, curriculum, no, in yeah. maritime education, yeah. and I, I guess also cre just creating awareness in anything maritime, wow. because if we do that, then the effect will be so much better. Yeah, there's a lot of opportunities and potential if we just really focus on it and use it to our advantage, then yeah, it will work well for us. Okay, well, that, that's a lot to chew on, but before we move on, we'll just have to take a quick break. This is Business and Politics. We're talking to Ms. Marianne Pastrana of FastCats.